on Clear Your Clutter Inside and Out, we're talking about animal communication part two. How can our pets help us clear clutter? What are the types of messages an animal communicator gets? What do the Caraccio cats have to say? And what did they teach Julie? Learn about animal communication as we continue our month focusing on living life fully. Do you control your clutter or does your clutter control you? On Clear Your Clutter Inside and Out, we'll teach you awareness as well as action steps to create change in your life. Come on, let's get started. This is part two of our interview. I hope you were able to listen to part one. Like part one, we also do a little bit of broader messages, delve into human a lot, although we concentrate on the animals. Lots of good information. I'm going to encourage you to pay attention to the messages of the cats. We've got them for a while and then do the rest of the interview. A while back, and I'm either going to do another one at the end of this year, or probably for the beginning of next year. It's like just see a 2020. When I did a card reading, I took five or six decks and I just said, what does a group need to hear? And then I shuffled and then I read messages. And when I've participated in group things like that, I, there's always a message for me, always. And so I'm going to go forward with that same thought that there's something here from my cats that will most likely apply to you. Maybe not everyone and definitely not everything, but I'm going to encourage you to be open to that. Pay particular attention to what Nini had to share. Whether your animal is here or has passed, Beth can bring forward information about their personality, feelings, soul contract, life challenges, preferences, and or history. If you have a particular question about a wild animal or domestic pet, or simply a curiosity, she can connect for you to provide an animal reading with a sacred letter. They also are having a book come out. Again, I'll provide a link for that. We had recorded this and I said, oh, let's do it closer to when your book's coming out. People have some information and then if they're interested in reading more, can purchase your book. They'll have information about that if you're interested in reading more about the animals. Please welcome again, Beth Mund and Barrett Stover. Oh, Athena, first of all, I have to say that I started to get on, which makes sense that I got onto this when I got to Athena, that your names are spot on for who they are. And, it's, and it speaks to your spiritual connection and it speaks to your connection with them. Like all of a sudden I was like, wow, she's making my job easy. She has like the perfect names for them in order to allow me to tap in. Um, oh, so, excellent. And I, I didn't get that right away with Antonio because you didn't you didn't come up with that name is what you had said. So that makes sense. Um, so Athena, I just kept feeling that, um, oh, she has your heart. I mean, they all have your heart, but she really has, has your heart. I just got like neat. There's a, there's just a, just a closeness, um, to hold her close into your heart or even, I don't know if you physically, hold her to your heart she had you know if you're a cat owner you understand it's on their terms yes but one thing that i often do is i call it the caraccio family heart circle so i visualize and start with tony then go to me then in order of so it goes joey antonio athena nini and gus and then back to tony to create the circle of the caraccio family heart circle so that we're all connected yeah, i know i'm you know and um, most people might think that's weird, but they're our family. So I will like visualize that a lot as well. No. Oh, well, she's saying it was about, very much about the heart. She, I, she's so, talking about helping you to become settled. She's showing that she has patience. Does she have patience? Uh, I worry about her, but that's interesting because we downsized a little over a year and we're moving again We'll stay because everything that's going on, we're going to have left in two years. And so part of me still feels unsettled because like we got here and unpacked and I've started a pack to move. Again. You know, it's, it's stressful. Yeah. So she's, she's not she's feeling more, settled. Yeah. 
she's been working on that with you. And it, well, I appreciate and, it, and, it. And so she's letting me know that she's helping you to feel settled. Does she get a little grumpy sometimes? Oh yeah. Yeah. But I, yeah. Um, almost want, wants to be left. I said, I wrote, has a way about her softer, but wants to be left alone. Almost like sometimes like, why are you bothering me? She gets like that. And so that's what I was trying to say earlier. Like if we, it's on her terms. Yes. Yep. Yeah. I wrote, she's got a bite to her. It's on her terms, but there's such a, she's a little tired is, is what she was telling me. It's not anything, you know, more than that, but she's a little tired. Okay. Yeah. I, I, wor I worry about her a little bit. So trying yeah. to do everything we can to help with that. But she's okay though. She, she says, um, she kids around, like maybe in my retirement, you know, I'll, I'll be you know, sunning myself somewhere, having, having a nice, nice time. But I, she's talking about her life or I don't know if that brings up anything for you, but. Well, the, one of the things I want to do. So at our last house, we only had Joey, Antonio and Athena and Athena used to run around and have kind of free reign. And Antonio, I kept in cause I was well outside in the yard. But Athena got captured once uh, last two Thanksgivings. And I'm telling you, I, I, I talk about your intuition. And this is why I want people to listen. I said to my husband, I know where she is. We're going to walk the neighborhood. And he's like, you're a nut job. And so I, cause I had walked and I said, you're, and he was like, what are you going to say when we get there? And I said, I'll figure it out. So I stop in front of this house and I knock on the door and I, and I knocked on other neighbors. Door. I said, my cat's missing. It's his Athena, blah, 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 blah. And oh, and so I had hired an animal communicator before I knew you all. And she had said, you're, you know, I had gone that morning. She's like, you're spot on with your intuition. And she had said, uh, what are they, the wrought iron gates? And she had mentioned that. Well, the woman had a wrought iron gate in back. And what she said to me, and so she thought that she was homeless. But I'm like, okay, Athena doesn't look like a homeless cat. Okay. It is what it is. And she hadn't had a collar on my fault. We have a collar. And so, but she said, and Athena would go over there to hunt the mice. Mm -hmm. And I was like, oh, she's a huntress. So that totally made sense. So the woman was doing a good deed, but I'm like, she's chipped. If you ever catch a cat or a dog, see if they have a chip. And so she had all this freedom. And when we moved here, she's, she hasn't been as settled. And if I have to work on that and she is mirroring back to me, it's like, so we had a six foot fence that they can't get out. Although the first time Athena went out, she dug a hole mm. and got out and we back up to wetlands. So when we move again, I want to figure out and do a better job of creating like, there's a thing she can climb into now, but I want to make it have more guard and I want to make it more sensory friendly and get back that, that ability for her to go chase and go do what she needs. So I felt guilt like, oh, you went from where it was a better environment for Antonio, where I can let him out all the time and little stinker got out even with that, you know, is that I felt like, oh, Athena suffered now because she can't, but like our next door neighbor captured a neighbor's cat and they almost died. And they mm -hmm. came to me and I said, you need to get to the shelter tomorrow. And the, and the cat was slated to be euthanized that day. And I said, and luckily they were an elderly couple, luckily they were saved, but that's made me anxious because I'm like, I've made my position clear, but who knows what he's feeling that day. But I'm like, I can't. So all of that more, you know, it's all of that's playing into everything. Yeah. A hundred percent. Um, so she sees as whatever home you're going to be going to is going to be her retirement. And, okay. and so that is at your spot on with thinking about her. And what she's saying is, um, she needs, she needs her own space somehow to be able to give her that space. She'll be able to be so much better. Um, when the others are around, but she needs to have that space and whatever that looks like for her in, in your next, in your next place. Or even if you can create that somehow. I'll figure out how to create it now. She has one cat. The problem is, and we'll get to them, the two babies are kitties. So they're trying to figure out their place in the world. And like last night, I was like, Nini, come on. Thiefy's on the tree. Come on. Come over here. Come with mommy. Like yeah. give her some space. Yes, exactly. So she's talking about that. Yeah. And totally normal stuff. Um, you know, I, I have a puppy and an older dog and the puppies, you know, always go into her and she plays with her sometimes. Other times. She's like, get her away from me. 
you know, because <laughs> right. like, yeah. you know, I'm older and, you know, like I want to chill, you know, right. exactly. <laughs> relax. So, yeah. So that was the main gist of her. Um, and that, um, she's again, helping you be settled and, um, and then she will be able to do it even more with having some of that space for herself. Just like some of us need space. It's the same thing. You know, some of us, I know I'm the same way when I, I'm someone who, I'm more cat-like, my husband's more dog-like, you know, I'm like, you know, I just need my space. And if you come into my space when I'm trying to be alone, I'm going to, you know, maybe have my claws out a little bit um, where he's like, I just love you all the time. I just love you all the time. I just love you all the time. <laughs> I'll do that for, cause like Joey has a special cave-like thing that he loves and he has a space in the closet that for the most part they leave alone. Maybe that's what I need for her is to create, I'll think on it. I'll ask her to keep giving me send me some pictures we'll find something but that's and just let her know. know this is a temporary this is temporary and i'll work it more later but just to give you some temporary space so you can yeah chill and not i know you won't be bothered um would yeah. be great yeah for so august um or augustus um yeah. he was talking about music um do you play music do you like music um does someone in your house like music is there something related to that? Um, yeah. I've been wanting to listen to music more, but also the other thing is I have on my desktop, it's called Music for Cats, which okay. is specific music that a man created, whether it's energetic, viber, whatever, whatever, that's like instrumental stuff that's specific to, for cats. He wants it. He and she, Gus is a she. Oh, it's she. a Gus stuff. Sorry. Sorry. So, I'm, yeah. I'm horrible so, with she piece. I do that all the time. So um, she wants she, music. Because I don't, I don't actually feel gender. That's all. Yeah. yeah. He wants the music. Okay. Play that music. Um, and she's in here with me now. And this is a computer I have the music on. She's the one that probably spends the most time in the office with me. So I'll start playing the music. She, yep. She wants the music. She likes the inside better than the outside is what she told me. Okay. Um, I think it's because, um, she's working with you also, and the music is helping to relax and relax her. And it also is going to have a double benefit in helping to relax you and any anxiety that comes up, it's going to bring it down. And so she does her work inside with you. Whereas Athena is out there sort of chasing and doing that. She, she she's more working on the inside is what she was telling me and i've had more anxiety you know filing the lawsuit relieves some of that but then we have to go to court and then everything with my mom being sick i'm a little more anxious than than usual and it's interesting so gus and nini were ferals that we helped rescue someone put out and i was like moved to help and they had a brother and sister and another woman took them but that's interesting okay so i'll play music message receipt yeah. So it's going to be for her and it's going to be for, for you. you. Yeah. I, yes. That's the way it works. I, I get it. I'm, I, they've been sending me stuff as you're talking. I haven't been completely a hundred percent, but paying attention, but I'll get there. Okay. Right. No, that's okay. Um, and, and it happens also when we're involved in our life. And I do that to my dogs when I'm an animal communicator and my dog will come up to me like, you know, are you going to listen to me and, and get this little little one like away from me like you know I need to go into the room by myself so we we all we all get over involved in our stuff um but she also was just wanted to say that she looks up to you um she made it a point to say that that she looks up to you and that she um there's, there's a I don't know if you're gonna see it now or later but there is a maturity about her and she's an observer and she's yeah and she's very aware of of all of what's going on that's interesting that uh, that makes sense because again gus is kind of like fifi on the like i'm gonna watch i'm gonna hang out like i we're getting a new cat sitter and i literally said that was telling them kind of the rundown and i said gus will watch you for a while hopefully after a couple of days she'll come out and you know maybe want a pet or two but she kind of hangs back and and observes and checks out the scene and then acts after that. Yes. So that's that. Yep. She was telling me that too. Um, and, and, you know, e even just know Barrett and I were even speaking about this this morning that sometimes we don't necessarily gravitate towards something um, because it's not where we're meant to be and meant to do our work. 
So it's not necessarily that the outside is horrible or, you know, or, or, or anything's wrong with it, but she's very much an observer and meant to be there for you and for, for everybody. And um, her work is more of an, of an inside job is what she was telling me. So Joey, Joey was talking, it must be about the lawsuit. I, I thought it was a relationship, um, but she was talking all about the relationship <laughs> and the lawsuit. Um, and you're thinking, oh my gosh, I don't want to tell this woman if this is the relationship <laughs> with her husband. How am I? Well, I didn't know, you know, and I was like laughing, but I, I just, I, you know, there was a, an animal reading that I did and, and the dog was coming through with all this anger, a whole bunch of anger. And I said, what, you know, what's up with the anger where who's angry. And she did talk about her husband, um, and that it was really coming from him. And there, it, it, the, the dog was bringing forward this information and the dog had passed. Um, and that when the dog was barking incessantly, which was one of her questions, he was trying to get her to wake up and to stand up for herself. Wow. Um, wow. So they do, you know, I, I really have to bring forward what an honor what the animals are bringing forward. Um, and you know, and I never, I do it with love and it's always for healing. Yes. It's, yes. It's, it's, there's no judgment. Like how could you, you know, not stand up? No, it's like, look, I'm trying, I'm, I'm here to help you. I'm here to help you. So I felt the soul contract with Joey very strongly. It doesn't mean you didn't have a, you don't have a soul contract and a soul contract is something that we connect with and our animals an agreement that we make before um, we incarnate in order for them to help us through a process or a situation or to be in our life. And after I'm done connecting, I want Barrett to talk about her, um, her dog who had passed and his soul contract. Oh, yeah. Please, Incredible please. Story. Um, and it's in, in our book. So it doesn't mean that you don't have a soul contract because you do have a soul contract with all these, all these cats. And oh. you feel that like, right? Joe, yeah, but Joey is my husband's, Joey and, Joey and my husband have been together longer than we have. So Joey's like 16 now, mm -hmm. and he is, Tony, he's their best buds. He, and is a it's very dog-like in that sense to me, loves my husband. When I went up to care for my mom, thinking, that'll be all right, Joey will sleep in my place. So, you know, he'll be happy. He won't be there. Like, he'll have enough room on the bed. So, but they are, yeah, they are super tight. Yep. Okay. So that, that's why that was coming through. Um, um, and he's just talking about the, was there any money involved? Is there any money involved? We lost money. So basically what happened is we wanted to put solar panels on our house. It was, this is a huge deal because it's not just with us. So anyway, the board changed the rules in the middle of the game. Like, that's what I was saying. Like the other night, my grandmother pointed to me at, set the end, at the, our, our meeting, they said that they can supersede state law. And that's what my grandma was like, here's another nugget because it says if there's a conflict, North Carolina rules of law rules above everything else. And so we lost money and we asked to be reimbursed for that. They ignored us. So we said, it's been six months. We filed a suit. And then, and then they retaliated against us in a couple ways. So I think my husband handles it better than I do, but it's just cut. And then they did it to another family and another family came over to talk to us. So it's just, and if we hadn't a lot, well, the ir irony of it is, is everything they put us through, if they hadn't have done that, we wouldn't have taken the time to research and learn, but you know, we had to put a deposit down to get the material they wanted because we canceled, they kept dragging their feet we lost the money because the, the company said, we're going to take some of our deposit. And we were like, that's fair. We, you know, what the company does on the up and up, but it was just, uh, to me, it's like you talk about the animals. Well, Gaia to me, Mother Earth is a leave, living, breathing thing. And Corona has gotten us to stop some pollution. Like I'm taking a plant medicine class because I feel this, I've always felt this connection to the earth. So for me, it's not just about us and losing money. It's the other neighbors that didn't get solar. We live in North Carolina where the governor wants to have sustainable energy. It's about, uh, my goal really is, because it's just not the lawsuit. I'm contacting the governor. I'm contacting state legislatures because they're trying to put a bill through basically that prevents HOAs from preventing people from getting solar. So to me, this is not just about us. Yes, we lost money, but there's a larger picture here. Yes, absolutely. Um, so he's talking all about that. Um, and also, uh, again, he's honoring the work you're doing. He is honoring all of this. And he, um, 
And that's the str strength of the soul contract that I felt. Um, and he's just um, connecting with this. He's called fighting a secret war. Um, and that's, that's the words that he used. And again, I wasn't sure at the time, but now it all makes sense what he was, what he was talking about. And it's hard and it can cause pain. Um, and he's talking about the money, but um, he is just um, very aware of it. And he's, is, he's feeling some of the anxiety, but he's transmuting it. Oh, he's helping good. transmute it. Yeah. Good. yeah. He's not feeling it in a negative way. He's good, 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 good. It. He's just um, kept saying, like, I honor your, your, your secret war. You know, don't get crazy, you know, meaning like, you know, always put in perspective, always remember what you're doing. So I've done a fairly good job of that. Yeah, exactly. Um, he's, yeah, exactly. But I do have moments when I'm like, I want to stick it to him. Yeah, but you'll bring yourself back, right? Yeah. And we all do that. We get riled up and we can't help it and we get defensive and we get emotional. Um, and, he, and that's what he was saying too. But we're human. Allow yourself that humanness and it matters that we bring ourselves back and go, oh, but yeah, I saw what I just did. <laughs> That's what he's saying, um, which we all do. We all, yeah. we all do that. So Nini, is that what you call Yeah, so and, and Nina is her name and Nini is the nickname and they really are just Nini and Gus now. Okay. Okay, I'll just read a little bit of what she said. Um, oh, she wrote me, I'm proud of who you are. Um, she wants to remind you that you are perfect and brave. She said so she's not scared. Um, she, she's a thinker. She wants to avoid conflict, wants to know what's around the corner, does not want to get mixed up in any nonsense, likes to have a clean reputation, likes it that way. Um, even walk around a little bit quietly on tiptoes because um, it's easier this way. She's not a fighter. She was saying, and I, I don't know if this is about her, about you, or it's, a, or it's a little bit of both, but she's saying, I may be a little bruised, but I am brave and this is me. Like, this is me and I'm proud of who I am. And that's the message for you. Well, that might be for both of us about weight because okay. we're working on Nini. I've had all the blood tests done. So now we have to put the dry bowl up at night and I might have to try hydrolyzed food. So I'm concerned about her weight. I'm concerned about my weight and have tried to make that a priority. But that I know for me is a is definitely an important personal message because that's something I've struggled with on and off. Like, oh, but if I'm heavier, I'm not good enough. You know, it affects who I am. So that makes sense for me. That's it. Like she didn't mention weight, but that is huge in her message. Like no apologies, she kept saying. No apologies. This is this is who I am love me for who I am. And that's, that's her message for you. And I guess, and then for herself. Yeah. Like, it's okay. We all been through so much in life and it doesn't matter. And just, you know, to, yes, to love yourself for who you are, for who you are. And that, so, okay. So I understand the thinking when she was talking about being a think thinker, um, we can go to our head so often in order to protect our heart, you know? So what she's saying is, you know, it's okay to feel that pain. It's okay to open up for, to who we are and to be, and to feel that worthiness. And it just brings us first full circle back to what we were talking about, to feel that worthiness for who we are and to love ourselves. And if, and if, you know, we're meant to lose weight um, for a health reason or not, um, that's okay, but not to do it because of unworthiness. And that was, that's her beautiful message for you. That was, you were spot on with everything. That was incredible just so you know, and you nailed them uh, and their personalities and everything and picking up everything that's going on in the house. And I'm relieved to know that that's always was a fear of mine, that if they were helping with my anxiety, that they'd take it on. That's yep. always a concern. So that makes me like, okay. No. And they are, um, like we talked about having their roles, like they're here for this. And, and, and it's the one point I wanted to make before I'm going to turn over to Barrett. They are, uh, they're here, they're here for their own, they have their roles. They're here for, for what, I'm sorry, they're contacting me. And sometimes when they're, when they're contacting me, I can't keep track of what I was saying as, as, as myself, but, um, they're reaffirming this and that they've all agreed to this and they're okay. This is what they want to say. So they, God, they keep pulling it away. Okay. 
Sorry. <laughs> That's right. So, okay. So um, they don't get into their heads like we are. So there's no suffering. So they take something on from us, they release it. They don't hold on to it. We hold on to it because we are so like, well, what is this about? Like, you know, what is this? What should I do with this? What should I not do? With it? It's none of that. It just bypasses and it goes right through them. And all of our animals do that. There's never, they might experience pain. They get hurt or right. but there's never any suffering. We create suffering by our minds, create the suffering. So whatever it is they're helping you with, they are not suffering and they're not even holding onto it. They let it, they let it pass through and whatever they take on is their role. Um, and that all of our animals are helping us in so many ways. Do you speak kindly or critically to yourself? Are you always trying to control people, events, or outcomes? How supportive is the company you keep? Ready to release stress and embrace tranquility? Get control of your clutter so your clutter doesn't control you. Reclaim time, money, sanity, and resources. Emotional, Got Clutter 365 Journal Prompt supports you in clearing your emotional clutter. Free gift with purchase to support you even more in your journey to declutter your life. Great, wonderful. So Barrett, we want to hear your story. Oh my gosh. First of all, Beth, that was absolutely profound and remarkable. And um, so what I was just getting exactly what you were just saying about the transmuting that, um, but I was hearing like nine lives, right? So mm -hmm. it goes back to, okay, like Beth was saying earlier, you know, we made a choice or we feel, you know, guilty or we, or we, you know, we don't feel like we are our best self or something. Well, okay, you have, a, you have nine lives. <laughs> you know, choose, <laughs> choose differently, right? That's what they're saying. Like, you know, don't just be stuck at it. You just choose it again. And, and cats have so many lives that, you know, oh, you know, pass that one off and I'll choose something differently. The other thing that I was getting when, when you were talking about how you go around the circle, but they're showing me that, that they are your five points of the star. Mm. and that they are each holding a point and and together it's almost like when you hold a parachute right you know yeah. you need everybody to lift that up that you are they are lifting you but you are lifting them and they're showing me that they're the five points of your star each one each point has is a different personality and a different role but they all can't a star can't be in the sky unless they all the five points are together right so that's that, why you're meant to have all of them. All that's of them. I was getting, they're all meant to be there. That's mm -hmm. beautiful. And they're all playing a role. And so Beth was just alluding to earlier. So they all have different contracts. They all, like, just like we do, we all come with our, a soul contract and, and who we choose, you know, how the lives and the people that we are coming into our families, that there's a contract, it's a contract and it, and it can be difficult and it doesn't, um, but it's all for our learning. It's all because we're being put into a situation in order to choose how to respond to a situation, how to respond to life as it unfolds. And it's not always, you know, there's, there's, there's the highs and there's the lows, but it's, it's the all of it. But it's our choice, right, of how to respond. So I just share you a quick story that I never grew up with a dog or any, I mean, I guess I had, I don't know, we had gerbils and, <laughs> but anyway, but nothing like a cat and dog, but I had neighborhood cats and dogs and I have twins and I have a daughter who's been wanting a dog, wanting a dog. So we ended up getting a, a dog and her name was Summer. She was a little golden retriever and things, we actually got her, um, I think if I think of the timing. So so I have multiple sclerosis. I shut down in, in 2010 with MS. And um, for like three months, I really couldn't walk. I was a wall hugger for a while just to get my stability. I had to use walls and people. And um, so Summer helped me to, to walk again. Wow. But what sort of came through later, like I'm kind of jumping around here. But Summer had a contract with me, but she also had a contract with my daughter. And it came through more clearly in her letter that she channeled through Beth when she was living. So Beth and I were out walking and she connected with Beth 
and was talking to Beth and was talking about her soul contract, but her soul contract specifically with my daughter. So about two years after, you know, I got better and I'm walking, that was in 2010. In 2012, my daughter at age 14 got a rare cancer that like 25 kids in the world get. And, wow. and so we went through a full year of, um, you know, chemo in New York City and so forth. And Summer was speaking to her soul contract with Sarah of absorbing her cancer. So what's really remarkable is it's a rare cancer. It's a cancer you get when you're 65 or older, not when you're 14. And there's, wow. that's why there's so few children that have it. But Summer spoke to through Beth about her taking on, this is part of her soul contract with Sarah, is to take on her cancer. So Summer did pass at age seven with cancer. And um, I don't know, Beth, you can talk more about it, but it was really th that um, speaking to, you know, there's there, we're, we have a soul contract for transmuting energies, but we also have bigger contracts that, that we had a role to play and we, we knew this coming in. And um, as Beth will always say, like, it's not a coincidence, just like when you went to the shelter and um, Antonio came, it's not a coincidence that you were meant to be together, but you listen to that intuition, whether you consciously or subconsciously, but like, oh yeah, I, I need to take this cat home. But you honor that so that other things could unfold. And it's when we honor what we're feeling, even if we don't understand out, because there's so much beyond our understanding, but we're honoring it, it allows things to unfold. And it allows our soul's journey to almost be aligned with the way it's supposed to be. Like Summer spoke in her letter before she passed. It's one of the few letters in our first book, Living Beyond Fear Sacred Letters, from the afterlife, where we ha she was still living. But she's even on the other side, she still continues to be in touch. And I feel her. I feel her when I'm out walking and Beth, you know, connects with her and and hears, you know, her her conversations. And I do believe another letter is to come from her um, speaking on the other side. But there's such a bigger picture and it's part of that soul's journey. I got chills when you were talking about summer dying of cancer and absorbing that and taking that from your daughter. That's just, wow. And that was decided before the summer was uh, incarnated. That was all decided with Sarah before the two of them on the other side, which is incredible. What tips would you give for people who want to start to communicate with their animals? What would you say to them? The first thing I would say is observe. Start observing their behaviors. Start uh, using your natural instincts and natural awareness, just like we do with people. Like for instance, when I was giving you that example of, of my dogs who were riling up. If your dog starts barking or your, dog, or your cat starts you know, acting up, um, think about the situation that you're currently in. What might be affecting them? Um, was there, were you fighting? Were you feeling a certain way? Um, and observe and, and then you can begin to feel into them. It doesn't mean, um, you, you can receive information without hearing, you know, as, as I do. There's so much information you can know. Body language, just like we do with people. Body language is, is, is big. I worked with a woman who was saying, you know, I don't, I don't know what to do, but every time my daughter goes and pets our dog, she's fine. But when my husband goes and pets the dog, he's not, uh, she, you know, she's not. And um, I said, she's giving you a message. You need, it's not. So um, I would say the second thing to do is to take yourself out of what you want. People come with all these uh, ideas of what their pet's going to be. I spoke with a woman who uh, was a, wanted her pet to be a therapy dog. And when I connected with her dog, that was not what she was going to do in this life. In fact, she showed me herself as a lion in a past life, in a, as a circus lion, in a cage, and was worked all of the, the time, was in this cage. She was here to play. 
to relax. So we have to wipe clean what our expectations are or even what their personalities are. I have a lab, I had a chocolate lab who passed who um, was, her prey drive was huge. She would just chase the ball all day long. You know, I'm not a hunter, we don't go out hunting. Right. But all she did was play all day long, all day long. Um, she was a typical dog. My current lab, Bella, no, you, she doesn't want to chase the ball. She, I'm tell, she's told me she was a cat in another life. And, and she lays on the windowsill and soaks up the sun. That is all she does. And we love her for who she is. And she's also uh, was talking about like um, what we were talking about, uh, about, you know, on my terms, you know, um, with Athena, like on my terms, like I, I want a little affection, but not too much. Like I'm done, you know? So, so we have to release our own expectations of what their behavior should be like, of what their personality should be like. And observe when they're giving messages, um, you know, that are, you know, we don't have to hear what their words are to know what those messages are. Um, and then um, if you want something deeper, you know, you can c contact an animal communication and say, well, why is she having that feeling towards um, your husband? And I can get information about history and, you know, trauma and, you know, and past life even. So we all have the ability on some level. Okay. And last question, and then we'll let you tell, tell where we can find more information. So part, as part of the podcast, I like people to take action. You've given some great examples of animal communication, but since we've touched on afterlife for both human and animals today, what take actions would you recommend to people? Because I do this podcast to give people examples, and then I want them moving forward in their life. So it can be on any part. Both of you each give us whatever take actions you feel move to share. Um, so I think I would just say, you know, all the love that you give to your animal, you know, the care um, that they are, what I was receiving this morning, where they are your affirmation. So affirmations are positive thoughts, positive um, love that you give, that you put out to the universe, and it comes back. And it's out pictured in our animals. So when you're caring, you're walking your dog, or you're feeding your cat, or you're cuddling your your rabbit or you're talking to your bird or whatever the animal is, um, but you're, you're conscious of it. You make sure that they have food and water. You're conscious that they get their walks. So they need to go out for the dog. So be conscious of the, what you're doing for the animals. Make sure that you're doing that for you. The love that you're giving to the animals, that unconditional love, and you know that they're unconditional, let that radiate back to you and, and treat yourself like how you treat your animals. Be gentle, be loving, know that you are worthy, know that you are absolutely magnificent, that you are needed, you matter, you so matter, we so need everyone. Right now, more than ever, we need everyone fully expressing who they are with all of it, all the, you know, all the, 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 full, the fullness of the, the, the quirkiness, the joys, the, the silliness, and, um, and also to remember to play. You know, animals, just remember to, to take a deep breath and to play and to just find the joy in life. It's mm, beautiful. Um, I, would, I would second that. And I, just, um, I would just add that open up your mind that this is possible. You know, it's action. Um, the first step would be to just ask yourself a question. I'm very, very big on questions and spirit always comes to me in questions to get me to open up my mind, um, is to ask the question, what if this is possible? What if our animals are spiritual? What if they can communicate with us? What if I can communicate with my animals? What would that look like? How, how could I do that? And that will start the process going. And just open up your awareness, as Barrett, as Barrett was saying, open up your awareness when you're with your animals to a higher, a, a bigger picture, more awareness. If, if they could take something away from this podcast, it, it would be that just to perhaps, you know, open up the door, even if it's a crack to a whole nother world that's going on out there that we're not even aware of most of the time. Beautiful. Fantastic on both parts. Now tell people, I will also include on YouTube and the podcast links but tell people about the book where they can get it and your website or whatever else you'd like to share. I'll let you do that, Barry, but I just want to say we're coming out with a book, an animal book, and it's going to be coming out um, hopefully like, you know, sometime in the fall. 
um, and we're receiving messages and um, transcribing letters from animals. I've already spoken with a spider and a chipmunk, and I have a horse that's coming through. So um, this is going to be similar to our first book, but it's going to be completely centered around animals. So we're very excited uh, about that upcoming. So Barrett, you can give them information. Exactly. We're excited about that. Um, so for people who want to find out more about um, Beth and me, um, you can visit our website, which is the sacred letters with an S dot com. We have a, um, our first book, but the second book will be animals. There's a number of books in the lineup. And um, we're also on Instagram, uh, Facebook, you know, all the information is at the bottom of our website. Um, and if anyone has any questions, um, there's a place where they can pop it, you know, just pop a question um, to us and we'd be delighted to reply. Oh, awesome. This was great. I thank you all for taking the time. This was a wonderful interview on so many levels. And I know my listeners and viewers are going to get a lot out of it. So thank you. Thank you. And thank you for sharing your beautiful cats. Mm. Oh, wonderful. Thank you, Julie. Take actions from today's podcast. Be open to hearing from your animals. Be curious about messages from wildlife. Accept your animals as they are. Recognize animals have feelings and thoughts. Consider how you can support both domestic and wild animals. On our next episode, we're talking about, you like me, you really like me. Go out, clear your clutter to create the life you choose, deserve, and desire. When you clear your clutter, you can share your gifts with the world. Sign up for our free newsletter at reawakenyourbrilliance.com If you've enjoyed Clear Your Clutter Inside and Out, please rate, review, and share us. <laughs>